Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another Outdoors Maryland video. Today, we are kayaking and fishing in the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge down here on the Eastern Shore in Dorchester County. Windy day, not great, not great fishing conditions, but uh, a bad day of fishing on a kayak is still a good day on a kayak. So let's get in the water. Here's my rig, just a 10 foot Pelican kayak. Got my baits, net, and a dry bag. We're gonna be working chartreuse spinner bait and a white swim bait. That big paddle tail is gonna give me the vibration and visibility I need in this water. Um, of course, it's black water, National Wildlife Refuge, so it always looks like this. Now, all this bank looks really good over here, but I, I can always fish that on my way back in. So I'm gonna go with some local intel that I received this morning at the local Wawa. Make sure my hat doesn't blow away. And go underneath this bridge to the left. Gonna have to put the rods down to get underneath this bridge here. I think I'm probably gonna have to get down a little bit here too. very well. We don't want to hit that sign because my head will not make it underneath that. I'm 6'4". Six, six, I'm a tall guy. Oh. There we go. Oh, I see some jumping bait right there. Thing is, I always see jumping bait here and I've never caught a fish here. So I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's about. Maybe there's just like little white bass or something. I would think there has to be some sort of fish right at this current break. Whoa, did you see that? That was definitely a carp. I could see it clear as day. Hey, I don't know if these are the target species fish. But if fish are jumping, you always want to fish around the, the jumping fish. Those are the active ones. Maybe we can find a predator fish that's munching on them. Hey, I am not a saltwater fisherman, but you mean to tell me that there's not a fish right here? Right on this current break? All right, let's go try this grassy corner back here. Although, if I was a fish, I would definitely not want to live under an osprey nest. What the? Oh, what? Great, now I'm... Somehow my line got caught on my holder here and it snapped it. Sorry guys, my GoPro died. So any fish catch I'm gonna get from here on is uh, gonna be from iPhone. I caught a bass, a largemouth, on the spinnerbait, just sort of on this muddy flat. It's only about one or two feet deep, but there's a lot of stumps, so there's good structure. I didn't even really know there were largemouth bass in here. I thought it was all snakehead, catfish, and carp. It's a pretty good bass too. I'm happy with it. At least we got the skunk out of the out of the yak. He's long but skinny, only probably about a pound or so. It's also got a uh, not so good looking little scar right there. But hey, I'm happy with it. I didn't even know there were, there were bass in here. Goodbye, buddy. Water so uh, so chocolate milky, you can't even see him. Nice first fish. The only bad thing about that fish catch is uh, I've been targeting structure for these snake heads, like logs and reedy little uh, cuts. But that guy just came out like just out here in the water. So uh, that means these fish could literally be anywhere. I mean, this place is huge. I'm still gonna target structure for snake heads because they tend to uh, relate to structure a little more than a little closer to bass do, especially the grass that's along the edges. But uh, yeah, that, that could have made our fishing a little bit harder. So something that makes Blackwater really special 
is that north of Florida and other than Alaska, this region has the densest bald eagle population in America. There's a nest up there, that's a juvenile. It's pretty cool that you can catch bass and kayak right underneath a bald eagle nest. And there's an adult flying around. He's off that point over there. He just caught a fish actually. Flying low above that marsh, there he goes. That right there is definitely a ramp of some sort for muskrats or nutria or some animal to go up and down the bank. So one thing that makes snakeheads so hardy is they can survive in little water and pretty foul water too. They like to get up in as shallow and filthy stuff as possible, which means they could literally be in any of this stuff right now. They could be anywhere in this river. Yeah, see that right there? There's an old bottle. Let's go take a look at that. I thought it could be pretty old because it's out here, but nope, nothing special. I'll take it home though, just to get it out of the river. Look at, that's the bald eagle nest right there. Can you ever really get closer than this? So if you look across the river here to that far tree line full of pines, you can see that a lot of them aren't doing too good especially towards the end down there. One of the threats to this ecosystem is saltwater intrusion. Basically, as sea levels rise, uh, this area is very vulnerable because it's at or below sea level. And the trees can only be submerged and take, and take up so much salt water in their roots before they just can't hang on anymore. Uh, this river looks a lot like a lake. Uh, it, it didn't always used to be like that. Whenever it was first explored, this was a narrow little river. And now you can see it doesn't look anything like a river. It looks like a giant lake. And this is just one little pocket of it. You can see how lacking and shallow the root systems of, the, of these pine trees really are. There's just no soil to hold them in place. Classic Maryland, a blue crab. female right there. That is the telltale sign of a snakehead. I never even felt him on there. He was just sitting by this telephone pole. If he had just taken it a little deeper, I mean, look how much closer he had to go. Are you kidding me? Let's throw back in there and try and get him.